brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal, when He sent down the final message, the final divine message of Islam, He sent it and sent someone to clarify it to the Ummah. He sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to explain the details of this message. Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And we had sent down to you the message so that you may clearly explain to the people what was sent down to them. <coughs> Following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obeying his commandments and adhering to his sunnah is a part of our faith in belief and belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. As a matter of fact, it is a part of the first pillar of Islam without which one is not a Muslim. The two testimonies of faith. There are two testimonies testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah and testifying that only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is to be followed. Only the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to be followed. And the implication of this testimony is that we obey his commands, we refrain from everything he told us to stay away from, to believe him in everything he conveyed, and to worship Allah only through what he legislated sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to believe that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the final prophet, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but rather he is the messenger of Allah and the final And we must also believe as part of the implication of this testimony that he was sent to the worlds and not to a specific group of people. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as mercy to the worlds, to all mankind and jinn. And we must also believe as part of this testimony that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to the religion speaks only with revelations as Allah azza wa jal says وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى He speaks not out of desire it is none but Revelations. Adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is an obligation which one has no escape from. Because Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us to obey Him and adhere to His Sunnah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, Wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. And obey Allah and obey the messenger. As a matter of fact, Allah Azza wa Jal paralleled obedience to him to obedience to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And made the obedience of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to be equivalent to the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. مَن يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ He who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal 
made adherence to the Sunnah and obedience to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a way leading to something beautiful a way leading to the love of Allah you will be loved by Allah and your sins will be forgiven Allah says قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Say, O Muhammad, say, if you truly love Allah, then obey me. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. The scholars of the early generations of this ummah gave this verse a title, Ayatul Imtihan, a testing verse by which Allah tests the sincerity of the slaves' love to Him. So, if you obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if you adhere his, to his sunnah, if you follow his commandments, then you're truthful in your love to Allah azza wa and you become deserving of the love of Allah azza wa to you, as well as your sins being forgiven. And this sincere love to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu this is very beneficial in the hereafter, despite our shortcomings in this dunya. Anas reports, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic, Anas narrated that a man came, and in one of the narrations, it was a Bedouin. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, when will the hour take place? And it was time for prayer, so the Prophet ﷺ stood up and prayed. And after the Salah, the Prophet ﷺ turned around and he said, Where is that man who was asking me about the advent of the hour? The man said, Here I am, O Messenger of Allah. He said, now listen, the Prophet ﷺ did not respond to his question. He answered him in a way that benefits him. Which teaches us that not all the time when you ask a question, you need to get an answer specifically for that, that question. You can get something else as a response which is more beneficial to you. He ﷺ said, وَمَا أَعْدَدْتَ لَهَا how did you prepare yourself for the advent of the hour? Are you ready? In other words, are you ready for the hour to come? That's more important than knowing the time. What's important is that when it takes place, am I ready? He said, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah, I do not have a lot of prayers and fasting as preparation, but the thing that I have is that I love Allah and His Messenger. You will be with those whom you love. We ask Allah to join us with Muhammad Adhering to Muhammad's Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes one entitled to be admitted into Jannah. Al-Bukhari reports that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everyone in my Ummah will enter Jannah except for those who refuse. The companion said, but who would refuse? Now the clarification. He said, Man ata'ani dakhal al-jannah wa man asani faqad aba. He who obeys me will be admitted into Jannah and he who disobeys me refuses to enter Jannah. The choice is ours. The call is ours. We make it here. Do we? Or do we not want to enter Jannah? We want success. 
in this life and in the hereafter, well, it lies in adherence to the Sunnah, in the obedience of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُ Those who believe in Him, honor Him, support Him, and believe in the light which was sent with Him, those are indeed successful ones. Success in this life and success in the hereafter. Honor in this life and honor in the hereafter. Bliss in this life and bliss in the hereafter. And this bliss and honor in the life of this, wor of, of this world is something that you will enjoy in your heart. A lot of people have to have an equation. Bliss means money, bliss means status, bliss means job, bliss means real estate. Bliss means cars, bliss. No. Being content with Allah. Being pleased with Allah. And Allah being pleased with you as a result of you adhering to the sunnah of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is ultimate bliss in this life. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us this in this dunya as well as the hereafter. فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد see when Allah عز وجل legislates something he gives incentives as well as warnings incentives for those who want to adhere so they can be motivated to adhere and warnings to those who might retreat, fall short, fall in the trap of the devil and weaken. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ let those beware who oppose his orders, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, lest affliction and trial strikes them or a painful punishment. Ibn Abbas was approached by a man who asked him a question pertaining to Hajj. And he said, the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is such and such. The man said, but before coming to you, I went to Abu Bakr and Umar and asked them the same question and they said something else. What was the response of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu? The scholar, from the companions, he said, an sama'a I fear that the sky will shower you with rocks. I tell you the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is this, and you tell me that Abu Bakr and Umar said otherwise. Allahu Akbar. What a stern warning. He is referring to the two best of the best generation, Abu Bakr and Umar. But none reaches the level of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It could have been that they did not hear a certain narration and due to which they gave a different verdict than that of Ibn Abbas who heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the companions understood this warning very well. And therefore they were very keen on being very precise 
in adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger One time Umar was circling the Kaaba, and when he went to kiss the black stone, he said, I know, he was talking to the stone, I know that you're an object, you're a stone. You cannot harm nor benefit me. And had it not been that I saw the Prophet وسلم, kiss you, I would not have kissed you. He didn't know why. It was a command. Justification was not given. Wisdom is not known. Reason doesn't comply. Human limitations, right? But the command was given, and therefore we must adhere. A group of people who had existed and continued to exist, which were not left out unaddressed by the Prophet ﷺ. In the book of Imam al-Tirmidhi, classified as authentic by al-Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said, a time will come when a man will be lying down, relaxed, right? Lying down, and he will be told a narration from me, a statement from me. And his response would be indifferent. His response would be, the judge between me and you is the Qur'an. Whatever we see to be lawful in the Qur'an, we'll, do, we'll deem it to be lawful. And whatever we find in the Qur'an to be prohibited, we'll consider it prohibited. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, أَلَا إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ كَمَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ Indeed, what the Messenger of Allah forbids is like that which Allah forbids. These people are known to be Al-Qur'aniyun, Qur'anis, who only, and they're lying, claim to be following the Qur'an. Well, if they follow the Qur'an, Allah tells them to follow Muhammad. And if Allah tells them to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa cannot be followed, then the Qur'an has a problem. This refutes their claim. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, مَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنْ He who abandons my sunnah is not of me. We need to be very careful. The justification of these people is that the sunnah has been attacked with fabricated and inauthentic narrations. Yes, but Allah Azza wa Jal took upon Himself the preservation of the dhikr, which includes everything revealed, Qur'an and Sunnah. So, if He did not preserve the Sunnah, He did not preserve the religion because a massive amount of details of our religion was given only through the sunnah. Details of the pillars of Islam and of Iman were given by the sunnah or through the sunnah. We need to be careful not to fall into the trap of such people because otherwise it will be regret on the day of judgment. Allah says, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا And remember the day when the wrongdoer would bite his hands in regret, he will say, Oh, I wish I had followed the way of the messenger. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us among those 
who adhere to the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, fully and completely and precisely and in detail. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ja'alna mimma yattabi'una hadiyah wa yastannuna bi sunnatih wa yaqtafuna atharah. Allahumma ajma'na bihi fi jannatin na'im. Allahumma awridna hawdah. Allahumma la tahrimna jannatin.